it's politically incorrect to smoke a cigar. It's politically correct to smoke weed, which yes. just shows how sick our society is that there's been a war on cigars, but not on marijuana. All right. Very glad to have our next guest. As you may know, some people right away mm. will be incredibly offended, triggered. Uh, this is one time, too. Also, can you get a long shot here? Yeah. Where we covered up our sponsor, Walther. They're not going to be happy, but they don't care. They're good sports. With uh, our next guest's book, of course, Exodus. Exodus. You, you know, the book's about, it's about the rational Bible. We've talked with him about yep. this before. He's also a big cigar guy and pipe guy. So today, the entire episode, he's going to teach us the ins and outs. And also, Thematic episode the, that uh, could go weird places. a little bit of the legislative fight with, with cigars. Very different yep. from the weed folks, but still very real. You can follow him on Twitter, at Dennis Prager. Mr. Prager, how are you, sir? Great to be with you, my friend. And uh, I wish I could smoke with you right now. Funny, because later today I'm doing my fire, my weekly fireside chat, nice. where uh, we have a lot of, thank God, a lot of people watch, and I smoke a cigar the entire time because I'm in my house. Right. Right now I'm at my radio studio. I just finished my 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 national radio show, so I can't smoke here. But uh, I do it in the house. I have a great wife who's totally at peace with it. Now, my, uh, so I, I, I am going to give you more philosophy of cigars than you believe exists. Okay. Well, let's get it. We'll get into that. But I first, just, we have to, we have to light this, this puppy. What, uh, what is it? What are you smoking? Well, because uh, Sun Computer's in here, I didn't want to offend anyone. This is just the, the standard brick house uh, cigar, which actually, for the money, is is not a bad uh, cigar, in my opinion. My right. my favorites are, I think, I told you the, uh, the uh, Melania. I like a lot. Um, I like the uh, the Espinosa That's Valeran. the president's wife. Yeah, you no, know, exactly. No, we can't find her. Haven't you heard? She's been cooped up some, somewhere. She's a. Uh, uh, but this is just something that's a little less offensive for people in the room because you know, uh, sensitive constitution. So it's the normal brick house, the Churchill length. Yeah. Gotcha. So uh, I want you to know. I tweeted this out last month. By sheer chance, I came across an article in the Dallas Morning News. They interviewed the oldest American. I think the guy's a hundred. 11 or 116. Oh, the black guy. The black guy yes. who's in the armed forces. They asked him, they said, look, we know you're always asked this, but we'll ask you anyway, what's the secret to your longevity? <laughs> and the guy without blinking just simply said, God and cigars. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and, and I said, this is my man. <laughs> if, and if he's right, I'm going to 116. There, there you go. Well, I, what I love about him, too, he, he doesn't get it exactly in, entirely. First off, it looks like he's smoking very bottom shelf cigars, if you watch it. And he goes, Ziggy is about, when I smoke my cigar, I don't inhale. I do it the healthy way. And we're like, well, I don't know if you'd say the healthy way, but it's certainly less harmful than inhaling. Yeah. And, it shows, and, he, and he's lighting it. It's not exactly like vegetables. He's lighting it on his stove. If you watch on his gas. Really? <laughs> yes, if you watch the video, he's like, I do I do the I I don't inhale. We, we had to do that for we had to do that for a sketch once we had no lighter with us. We had to light it on an electric stove, which hit Spoiler, impossible. Yeah, it's, it's a, so he does do that. If you watch the video, go watch it. I'll send it to you after we do I this. I haven't seen the video. I only read the article. I didn't even know there was. I got to watch the video. You're right. He's face By first way, in a stove. My, my father, who passed away at 96, would have gave, given the same answer. Yeah. God and cigars. Well, I don't want to I don't want to mislead our audience. I'm not I can't make the medical claim that cigars lead to longevity. But speaking of lighting on, lighting on a stove. OK, so first off, what's the proper way to toast and light a cigar for people? All right. First, before that, we have the biggest of all philosophical questions Cut. regarding a cigar. What type of hole do you make on the top? Yes. OK, because so because people who don't know it comes wrapped. Right. And you have to make a hole. Obviously, you can't breathe in any any smoke. Right. So there are three types. A hole cut, which I call circumcision. Just a hole cut. <laughs> right. Right? The whole top. Guillotine. Yeah, guillotine. Right. Another one is a bullet hole where you get a sharp thing and That's you, I got here, you a punch, punch it yeah. in. Right? Punch it in. And the third is a V cut. It's shaped like a pyramid, sort of. It's or a V. And you slide the thing across the bottom. It's steel, and it makes a beautiful indentation uh, in it. Uh, that's my favorite. Okay. My least favorite is the hole cut. 
Yeah, but you know what? I have a V cutter, and I, I like it on bigger gauge cigars. Now, for those who don't know, I was mainly a pipe guy. This is something that mm -hmm. uh, Naki Jerry and myself. I'm a pipe guy too. Pipe is great. It is, but I, I you were the one who got me into cigars more by he introduced me to some different kinds. Uh, I had smoked before cigars before, and I'm not a, certainly not a chain cigar smoker, but I enjoy them very much. I have a V cutter. I like that on bigger ring gauges. For people who don't know. Um, there are different, you know, they gauge it. They gauge, gauge by ring size in the United States. So 50, 52. I think this is a 50 by 7, a Churchill size, longer. And now, not that would fat. take a V cut. It would take a V cut. I typically do it on 54 or larger. I do the V cut. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. And, and this is a 9 millimeter punch. So a little bit bigger than the standard punch. And uh, uh -huh. this oh, is. Oh, so you got a punch in that. I do. And it's just punch totally opinion. Can they zoom in on it? Can can we can we get a zoom on this? The reason now I will tell you this, Mr. Prager, and maybe you can correct me. The reason I like this is if a a punch is sharp, and, and a lot of people won't realize, you know, you can get cheap punches, but it does have to be sharp. There's no correct. risk of it crushing anything or compacting That's anything. Right. So if you don't get exactly. a good draw with a punch, you're not gonna get a you won't get a good draw with any cut, is is what I've encountered. And it's convenient because I can keep it on my keychain if I go through TSA. So that's why Hey, is, hey, 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 man. Is this there you go. There, oh, there you go. Look, he's got his whole key. There you go. Okay. Well, there is that. There you TSA go. Think it's, TSA usually think it's a bullet. Yes. Yeah, I've seen that well, too. Then I, then, then, then I show them, you see, I twisted it there yeah. and you can see, yeah. And they go, oh, it's just it's just a circular razor blade. You're, you're free to go, the, sir. Exactly. The guys don't know. They don't know about it. Okay, so blade. toasting this because I want to get this started as we continue to talk. All right. So this is a very tough question. <laughs> I have bought the idea that you light it first and then you start smoking as, okay. a su as opposed to puffing in while lighting. I have no idea whether that is an old wives' tale or old husband's tale as it, as it is, uh, or, uh, or true. I have no idea. Okay. I do, do it now separately. I, I, I somehow think it's a waste of time, but I do it anyway. Okay. Well, I appreciate your candor. So at, do you do it at a 45 degree angle and toast the edges? Show me here. I've got the light going. How, All right, how do go you... That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. You do, you put the, uh, generally you put the lighter at the angle and the cigar straight out. So like, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. And then just rotate. That's it. Okay. Now you're talking, man. And, and do you, try to make it even. Do you purge when you when you? Oh, the lighter's being a little bit difficult here, trying to do this on camera. Do you purge at all? Some people I know they do a quick purge of it because they claim a, the butane might. Oh my God! This. I am I am not in that arena. No, <laughs> That's not okay. A little bunch. <laughs> all right. Now, by the way. Now do it while puffing in, and you'll see how much faster. Of course, it yeah, that's usually what I. So I, I, I'm not sure it's not nonsense. There you go. You see, look at that. Yeah, and then now I. Now you talking, man. Okay. I, it, it, it may be nonsense. It could be nonsense, <laughs> but yeah. that's actually the only right. time I really like it is if I'm at a cigar bar and they've got, um, you know, women walking around lighting your cigar for you. Then I'm happy if they take their time. No, that's called what Hooters. But uh, I will say... No, no, no. You wait. No. At Hooters, you're not allowed to smoke, I'm sure. That's true. It's a regular restaurant. No, no. I, you know, you, you haven't been to cigar bars where there are... There are uh, oh, I have. Looking... I okay. haven't experienced the first time I ever had a cigar. I look back and I know the person was messing with... Not, not that Jared has a cigarillo there. So that's a soft flame lighter there. Um, I went there. It was the Chop House in Grand Rapids. Remember that, Jared? Yeah. A great, a great little cigar. Great little cigar lunch. So they would give you half off on your birthday with steak. The best steak has ever, I would go and get the venison medallions. It was my birthday, I'd never had a cigar. Half off your entire meal. Your entire meal. For two. I had never had a cigar before at this point. I said, I don't know, what, what should I do? They come up and they offer all the cuts. And looking back, I want to say, because it was my birthday, they gave me something fancy. I don't, I, it, something with a lot of Lajero in it, which is for, you'll explain to people, very high nicotine. Looking back, it, was, it wasn't um, a La Flor Dominicana. It might have been something like an Opus. It was absurdly expensive. I didn't enjoy it at all. And then they kicked us out because they said they have a party coming in. So I'm driving home. I don't nothing else. And I have it basically hanging out of my mouth with the wind going by because my wife doesn't want the cigar smoke in the car like a snorkel, breathing through it nonstop and i got home I don't, by the way i i don't i don't smoke in the car even for me it, it's oh. too congested or an, or an arena well i like a, i like a room like you're sitting in now that's perfect this is well we, we do we have some air exchangers in here so the studio is good long story short i did not handle that cigar very well the room was spinning and i got very sick uh and then i learned later on uh about the different kinds of cigars so yeah i, I i've been to a cigar lounge once now let, let me ask you this uh we can get into cigar philosophy, and I want to continue with that. One thing I've noticed for sure, though, 
if you're at lounges, uh, for example, I was in Florida, and there was a cigar lounge, or even in northern Michigan, it seems pretty consistent across the board, in my experience, anecdotally, that you find a lot of conservatives in the cigar and That's pipe. That's right. Why do you think so? <laughs> it's because it's politically incorrect to smoke a cigar. It's politically correct to smoke weed, which yes. just shows how sick our society is that there's been a war on cigars, but not on marijuana. Yes. This, this does not tamper with our brain. Well, if well, my well, pilot smoked a cigar the entire flight, I would be thrilled. <laughs> if I smoked weed the entire flight, I would not be thrilled. The smoothest landing you ever had. Well, it's true. I mean, think about yeah, every, right. great, um, every great piece of fiction of the last several centuries, almost all of them, nicotine or caffeine to some degree. Oh. Now, I'm not saying people should go out and light up cigars, uh, though they are developing some. I am. I, there's nothing wrong with <laughs> No, no, no. Let, uh, cigarettes will kill you, or they kill one third of cigarette smokers, according to the Lung Association, die eventually of lung cancer. And I believe that. But two thirds don't. That's also significant, too. But I would not smoke cigarettes. Remember, and this people don't understand, and it drives me crazy when they say war on tobacco. Tobacco is not the issue. Inhaling is the issue. You are not inhaling now. You are bringing the smoke into your mouth for taste, right? Not into your lungs for a nicotine effect. This is true. Well, and something else too. I actually have this up in front of me. The FDA finally released, and I'm sure you know about this, but I have to, to talk about this for our audience. The FDA released a study where they finally eliminated uh, people who smoked two cigars per day or less, handmade cigars, because all the previous studies included people who were smoking Swisher Sweets and basically cigarettes that look like cigars at uh, at gas stations, and they found that people who smoked two cigars per day or less, the increased mortality risk of cancer overall is statistically insignificant, statistically non-significant. Correct. That's very rare for the FDA to say something like that. When did, I did not know about that. When did that come out? I want to broadcast it. Oh, jar, darn it. Well, you know what here? People have already well, seen your book. Well, it gives you another chance to mention my book. There the you rational... go. Dennis, Dennis Pratt. Well, think about actually this. C.S. Lewis, all, all of these guys always overpiped their cigars back in the day. They would philosophize. They would get into right. to, to, to theory. They'd get into, uh, to what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, uh, not theory. Uh, the, the real depths uh, of the sea uh, of what, life. The word I'm looking for? Theo theology. Theology. Right? I'm not a good ambassador right now. <laughs> yeah, look, nicotine makes you dumb. You should smoke weed. It's a smart drug. Exodus, God, Slavery, and Freedom, the Rational Bible. Highly recommend it. I've been very much enjoying it. Um, Here's a question for you. How often are you supposed to... What's the recommended amount of... Uh, before you, 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 you tamp? You, you, but no, tap the ash. Tap the, tap the ash. Before he taps the ash, yeah. Dennis. Before it falls on you. <laughs> good point. That's the only rule... I feel like uh, the therapist in uh, Annie Hall. The important thing, Alvy, is to enjoy ourselves while we're here. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, that I remember that scene. He's <laughs> worried about the sun exploding. Yes, exactly. What's the point? He wouldn't do his homework. Um, no, this right. FDA study, hold on, let me bring it up. I believe it was 2016. And it was actually, they finally eliminated, they said, okay. And a big reason for this is because there have been a lot of new FDA regulations. People don't know this. Where Do me a favor. Seriously, send it to me. Okay. I will. And we have it here as an overlay for people watching. And again, I'm not advocating that people go out there and start chain smoking cigars. I'm just saying it is incredibly rare for the FDA to do. And the reason they did it is because of the Obama legislation. They wanted to get tobacco. cigarettes out of the hands of children, which we agree with. But they included yep. all cigars. It turns out kids aren't smoking $9 cigars. <laughs> and uh, pe hand, you know, cigar makers that you have long, long storied history with family cigar rollers and pipe makers said we shouldn't be treated the same as Marlboro. So the FDA did have to come out and release that st a study of two cigars per day or less. What's the date on that study? I well, what they did was they examined their studies and then eliminated those variables. Let me bring it up right here. I believe it is 2016. Uh, the okay. authors reviewed 22 perspective epidemiology studies on cigars and so health. So listen to this. Yeah. So if the FDA acknowledges there's no cancer risk, greater risk, then I would argue that for many people it does bring longevity because of the calming effect that it has. Not the marijuana calming. Right. Just the relaxation with it. It's with a yummy. It, that's why we do it. I do it for, it's because it's yummy. It tastes great. I love the taste. I, that's why I like a, a pipe. I'm, sure I'm looking at your pipes there. Yeah. No, we have because a I love the taste of tobacco. Tobacco is a yummy thing. I, can, I don't, I've never inhaled in my life. I'm not Bill Clinton. I would happily admit if I did, <laughs> but I haven't. I can't, I would, I cough my brains out if I ever inhaled 
anything uh, smoky to my lungs. Now, what got you started into cigars? My father was a cigar smoker. He smoked all day. He lived to 96, as I noted to you. Mm -hmm. And when I was about 16, he said, I said, Dad, I'd like to taste one. He said, fine. He was pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's a non-issue. He said, well, fine. If I'd have, I think if I'd have said it at 12, he would have said fine. Yeah. So, and I did, and I loved it. And that was the, that was it. So I've been smoking since I'm 16. My daddy was a smoker, and his daddy before him, and his granddaddy before him, and you'll be a pipe smoker, too. You will be a pipe smoker, too. It is, well, it's my grandfather. I felt so guilty because my, my mom smoked cigarettes and quit. The day she found she was out, she was pregnant, never again. I mean, French Canadians, they sm every all of them smoke cigarettes. It was a huge culture of smoking cigarettes. My grandfather, on the hand, smoked a pipe, and then he moved on to those cigarillos later on in life when I was, uh, you know, maybe about 9 or 10. And I remember I thought it looked so cool because my, my grandfather, right, he's the coolest guy, and it was in the ashtray. But my parents always told me, never smoke, never, never smoke if you're offered it. And I just took it to look like my grandfather, and it was still lit, and I didn't realize. And so a little smoke went in my mouth. I felt bad for years. I felt like I had lied to my parents, and that I was, yeah. <laughs> I might as well have been a smoker. But haunted me for years. It haunted me for years. But uh, <laughs> he, he didn't live uh, long because he had, a, he had a blood clot, and he refused to go to the doctors. But he was, up until the day he died, close to 80, was super spry and healthy. Um, so how often would you say you, you smoke a cigar, Dennis Prager? One a day? I smoke one every day. I smoke one every day, and I. Uh, but it's one a day. I, I very rarely smoke more than one a day. I smoke one a day. Then I and I'll also smoke a pipe full a day. So, but when I'm writing, which is all the time, when I'm not broadcasting or flying or speaking, yeah, that's that's it, it's it's my companion, and I and I love it. And a lot of people, by the way, like cigar the smell of cigar smoke. Yeah, I do. A lot. My wife does. She can't stand cigarettes, can't stand them, but she really does like this. By the way, your point about the cigar lounge, in every city, virtually every city, there's a place to go and smoke cigars. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I go all over the country constantly, and the first thing I do is I go from the airport, I rent a car, and I go to a cigar lounge, and, it, you know— most of the time, somebody there will know who I am, which I'm not looking, I'm not wanting, it just right. happens. But uh, the beauty is even when they don't have a clue who I am, they're so friendly. Yeah. It is the, the, it's such a bonding male experience, cigar smoking. Yeah. That the guys just talk to each other. It's very and, true. And it, it's, 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 it's a great experience, the whole thing is. And if there's a young guy there, I buy his cigar. Well, that's very, well, I'll just make sure to just follow you around the country then. That's cool. I'll, say, I'll yeah. have the Padron 25th anniversary. What you, uh, Mr. Parker, what would, you, what would you say is the mark of a good cigar place? What, what do you look for when you go to a different town and find a new spot? Uh, I, I, well, I, I like that it's, that it's not tiny, that you, you, know, you can sit down in a very plush chair, have, have, a, have your smoke. You could be private if you want. You could talk to people if you want. And you could plug in your computer. I do a lot of writing in cigar lounges. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, I, I just did an event for my Tampa radio station, and, and uh, they have a gigantic, I mean truly gigantic uh, lounge. You know, Tampa's a big cigar city. Yeah. And they, I, there were 200 people there in a cigar lounge for, for me to talk to them. And, of course, they gave out cigars and so on. I do a lot of cigar events around the country. That's, I've, uh, I've looked it, at some of your old archives, like back as far as 2008, and there's you broadcasting with your laptop from a cigar lounge. And I thought that that looks like a lot of fun. And it's becoming increasingly rare places where you can go and, and do this. But it does seem like the quality establishments stick around. What, what, in your opinion, is the mark of a good cigar for people who may not know want to get into it? The, uh, the, 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 there is really, there are only two answers to that. If you like it, it's a good cigar. If you don't like it, it's not a good cigar. And, th and that's true for, you know, I'm, I'm into audio equipment. You know, people say, what's the best speaker? So the best speaker is the one you like. And I mean right. that utterly sincerely. The other thing is though, will it not fall apart as you smoke it? That's will it unravel? Important. That's a cheaply made cigar. Yeah, like when I did George Washington, remember? And you, what did, what did you buy me? Oh gosh, it was awful. It was something really cheap and nasty. We were doing we were doing George Washington with a machine gun. It was a sketch, and we, so we had to you know chewed off. Old Basically, cigar. a black and mild with a tip cut. It off. was a black and mild. <laughs> it was like wine dipped or something, and we yeah, have outtakes yeah. of me because <gasps> it kept going into my mouth. Disintegrating. Oh, oh, it was God. terrible. Yeah. Why did you end up with that? 
What was this? We had to go to the drugstore last minute to do this sketch. Let me ask you this, and you've talked about the camaraderie. I will say this, why do you, why do you think that is? I've had some of the best conversations, some of my best writing, like writing in groups with other people. Do you think it's because women can just sit and look each other in the eyes and talk, and men often need a device, whether it's playing pool or sitting down and smoking a cigar? I think, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And I, I'll tell you this, I've had some of my best talks with my sons over a cigar. For that alone, it's been worth it. I just dropped the ash on my desk, so I missed that last yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, I, mistake. I'm sorry. I meant to warn you you should have dumped it, but I wanted to see how long it would go. <laughs> it was sort of cruel on my part. Yeah, I, I, as you were talking, went boom. Okay, uh, but do you, you know the story about Churchill putting a pin in his cigar? Have you heard that it, story? Yeah, he would take a pin or like a nail and put it in his cigar. So it would keep the ash so long when he was having diplomacy talks that people would focus on this crazy long ash and not what his opponent was saying. Oh, my God. That's I don't believe it, but it's hilarious. It's probably not true. But it is a story <laughs> that if you Google is, is well known. Right. And he used to pierce his cigars. You know, he would do that. I don't know. I, I don't think a pit is going to keep the ash anyway. I, that's a hilarious. I, I, that's a riot. I, I have a, no idea if it's true. One thing I do, I, yeah. I do however, is... Um, I put activated charcoal in this little mason. That's my ashtray. And if you put it, the ashes don't smell in there. The one thing that people do, cigars smell nice. Ashes never smell nice. You want to get rid of those as quickly. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know about that. Tell me about it. So, you know, a lot of the air purifiers that you have either have an activated charcoal layer or right. they have bags of activated charcoal. You can just yeah. get it. You know, sometimes people try to use it for teeth whitening and stuff. I just get it in a powder. It's very, very messy. So it's important you buy it in a jar as opposed to a Ziploc bag. And I put a few spoonfuls. And I tap my ash in there, and you can actually inhale the ash, it, it smell, and it doesn't smell bad at all. It huh. really does capture the ash. Not if I drop it all over myself like a moron. Can you put it? Can you put it in an ashtray? You could easily put it. Yeah, you could put it anywhere. The only thing is, it's a very fine powder, so the depth of this helps to keep it from blowing away at all. If I'm oh, outside. Oh, I see. Oh, too bad. Okay. But you like can put it in an ashtray for sure. Um, so we were talking about that. So yeah, you, you think that really adds to the to the camaraderie is is a device to sit. As I said, I, I really well, I I love saying to one of my kids when they visit or if I visit them, they don't live in California, is you know, hey, hey, let's let's have a cigar together, and and it's great. Yeah, and if they're in California, they're they're horrified and they they shun you. You know, in Burbank, I live very near Burbank, and the the you can't even smoke by Burbank city law in a cigar lounge. How does that? Well, are there any? There are no cigar lounges then. There can't. That's be right. There are cigar stores. <laughs> you can't smoke in a cigar store. Wow. And so it's so disgusting. It's can you smoke in so a head shop? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. This is not a joke. Driving home from Austin, where Sven Computer infiltrated the LGBTQ AAIP panel, my, my uh, friend John and I uh, wanted a cigar. I had one. He didn't have one. So we stopped at a, at a unfortunately, a hedge. They call it a smoke shop, right? So we stopped, and we see all these bongs. And we're going, oh, okay, all right. So they probably we said, do you have any cigars here, perchance? And the guy goes, actually, yeah, and, this, and it's in the corner, this tucked away old humidor that had ne clearly never been opened. And we open it up, and there was a Romeo and Julieta in there, and it, the, you know, the tube, in the tubo kind, it had the old label, the old silver label before they even rebranded. And uh, it could have been the best cigar we ever. It, it was per, it had probably been aging there for ten years. The guy had never sold a cigar. It was to keep <laughs> the, the, funny. the fuzz off of him. Um, so what do you do then? Uh, is it just the municipality of Burbank where you can't smoke a cigar? Uh, Burbank and and I'm sure other cities, but I know Burbank because I live so close. But I tell you, it's so controlling of people's. It's so it's so infantilizing. You know, an adult cannot decide whether he'll smoke a cigar or not uh, in, in an enclosed place. Right. You it, it, you know, I I used to go on Bill Maher's show a lot when he was on ABC, mm -hmm. and and then you know then he moved and, and I haven't been on because I don't broadcast Friday nights. But the um, uh, for religious reasons. Sure. But uh, anyway, um, I on his show once I lit up. It's a long time ago, and uh, the the you at that time you were at least at least fifty feet from the audience mm -hmm. at least. And I I asked people. No, no, it wasn't. It was yeah, it was Bill Morris. Anyway, I asked. So how many of you think you're going to be hurt by by secondhand smoke? And most of the hands went up. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's so easy to frighten people irrationally. It's scary. 
Well, w w explain that for, because a lot of people still believe that who are watching. Uh, but you're, you obviously know this right. a little better. There was research that when they finally actually conducted the research, it's not nearly as harmful as people thought it was. Well, first of all, it is a brazen lie, and it's terrible when science is used for propaganda. It is a total lie that 50,000 people a year die of secondhand smoke. I don't deny that a baby that has, uh, that has uh, asthma will be exacerbated if he's in a little room with a cigar smoke or cigarette smoke. I, of course, I understand that. Of course. So you use your common sense. Yeah. Does it bother you? Does it make you cough? Then I won't do it. That's fine. But killing people from secondhand smoke? Oh, give me a break. Well, I was in uh, in uh, northern Michigan. I told you this story. And I had a little, just a little Perdomo cigarillo, uh, their, uh, their Habano. And I was, uh, sm so that thing makes a lot of smoke. And I was smoking it walking down the street, little tiny cigarillo. And this guy was with his wife. And he goes, <coughs> That's right. He had a pot leaf on his shirt. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> uh, if only I were smoking a joint, it wouldn't be a problem. And people. That's right. In You've got it. Smoke. Now, now what's your, so yeah. what is your stance on that? Is someone. People start doing that phony cough around electronic cigarettes. And that's just water vapor. <laughs> it's not smoke. I know. I know. I've seen it. I've seen people do that. Exactly. No, that's pure, pure psychology. But, and you know what's funny, though? And this is a good example of what we're talking about. I, I decided to uh, let those people walk on by. I was sitting at a park bench while my wife retrieved some olive oils, fine olive oils. She's very into olive oils and balsamics. And this guy walks by and he goes, oh, a stogie. That reminds me of my grandfather. He was from the old right. country, and we had a conversation about his grandfather. We talked for 20 minutes, and he moved on his, with his day. Nice guy. Just, and he said, thanks for that memory. I appreciate it. And it does seem to be a bonding experience with a lot of people, maybe just because it's been so ostracized mm -hmm. now. That's part of it, but it, I don't know. But you were right about having something to do. It's amazing that, that alcohol has not been demonized, and tobacco has. I wrote about that 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. how sick that is. How many people molest a child after a cigar or a cigarette? And how many after uh, alcohol? Well, if you're counting Bill Clinton with the interns with a cigar, but I don't think it's it but was it a was device. But it wasn't molestation. No, it wasn't. Excuse exactly. the polls. Excuse the results a little bit. Yeah, excuse I, it. <laughs> I'm not a Clinton fan, but it's not molestation. That's true. This is true. All right. Credit where it's due. That's a good point. Well, a lot of people will say, where do you line up then on... Uh, on, on marijuana and, and uh, how do you sort of... I uh, hate marijuana. Marijuana tampers with your brain. This doesn't. So do you think marijuana should be legal for people who want to smoke it in their house? Or wh where do you end up on that? Uh, I, 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 my view was if it had always been legal, I would not have voted to outlaw it. Mm -hmm. But since it was already illegal, I don't know what we have gained by making it legal. I know there are people who need it for medicinal reasons. Nobody has a problem with it. Uh, uh, I have a, an emotional, it's one of the rare times I acknowledge an emotional reaction. I, I am a child of the 60s, 70s, and I saw so many of my friends just tune out of life as they would, you know, just have, uh, we, you know, uh, uh, they'd smoke uh, stick after stick. And I, 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 have, I have a negative, I, anything that tampers with the brain, yeah. uh, I, I am I'm really, really opposed to. And they inhale, too. That's one thing, by the way. One thing I will say. Of course, you don't inhale. Is the, it does no effect. No. Uh, that's one thing that I will say. Uh, cigar smokers in general just want to be left alone. They're not telling anyone it cures cancer. They're not telling anyone that, it, that, that big pharma is suppressing it. Uh, in my experience, and by the way, I think if states want to legalize marijuana, I, I don't smoke marijuana. I'm not a fan of it personally. This is a very controversial position, but I think if states want to do it, Go ahead and, and, and do it yourselves. Um, but uh, they claim it cures everything. What's crazy is they claim it's not a performance-enhancing drug. In a lot of athletic commissions, they want people to be able to smoke marijuana, and then they go around and say it sharpens you and it makes you more brilliant, and it's this it's this miracle drug. There is a remarkable inconsistency with it. it seems to me cigar smokers just just want to be left alone. That's what I've seen. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, but. Uh, I, I, I admit that I have a positive view. I don't, I don't merely think it doesn't hurt. I, I think that of all the vices, it's about as harmless as exists. Now, wait, you do inhale. No, I don't. No, no. I, well, I retrohaled the nose. Yeah, but that's, you know, the... 
that. Just chew, chew. You, do you, you do that, don't you? Don't someone that someone taught me that. Uh, I can't. I, I don't know how to get it through my nose, and I don't want to learn. <laughs> oh well, you get it. You get a lot. Someone told me this is actually a cigar a cigar expert from, from I think from aficionado, and he said, yeah, you get all the flavors. He said you kind of you puff and you just let it go out the nose, and you get different flavors. And actually, you'll get entirely different flavors. When is it that goes, right? You, I'm surprised that I'm telling you anything about cigars that you don't. Well, I'm surprised too. I admit it. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Well, give it give it a whirl. It can be, and you can, add, particularly if there's a very strong pepper note, you know, to cigars for people. I'm going to give it a verb. I'll say, I'm going to crowd her now. <laughs> not if you want to be popular at the cigar loungers. You know, I mean, that, that punk who dressed up like a lady and interviewed Wendy Davis, we're not sure he's on our side. Um, what 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 do you look for in a cigar? Because they're all different kinds. What kind of flavor profile? I know exactly what, what people say to me, because a lot of people give me a gift of a cigar when they come to speeches and stuff. I tell them, because they don't know anything about it, I said, go into a cigar place and tell them the following. I would like the strongest, a best cigar, you non, non-Cuban, for up to the following price. Okay. That's all I care. Why non-Cuban? I, not like, I've never, there was not a single Cuban cigar I've smoked that I've liked. I like Nicaraguan and Dominican and Honduran. Why is that? Do you think it's true? I don't know. I just don't like <laughs> I don't know. How do, why, don't, why don't I like, uh, you know, uh, any given food? It's just, it's my, my taste buds do not respond to Cuban cigars. I do not enjoy them. You know, for author of the Rational Bible, there's a lot of irrational. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like it. But By I, the way, that's... on occasion, I will say that in the commentary. It's true. Um, I, it's why it's called the Rational Bible. I, no, I appreciate that uh, that you say that. You know, I, I have heard, and this is something maybe you could educate me on. I've heard that Cubans think about it just like anything, socialism, communism, once they were taken over by the government. I think they may have ruined their cigars. I think most people think of Cuban cigars, it's, it's the legend, yeah. not the reality. I'm, Nicaragua makes spectacular cigars, and I love strong. Yeah. It's funny. This amount of alcohol, I get a headache. The strongest cigar, I'm Mr. Happy. Were you always that way? Yeah, okay. always. You know, that's there's something you should probably do some genetic testing. It would be interesting with your with your brain type. Probably some what they refer to as ADHD, or because a lot of people get very stimulated by cigars or cigarettes or any nicotine. For me, it's yeah. But I, I what, I'm going to be going now two weeks to Eastern Europe to give some lectures, and I I won't be able to smoke nearly as much. I, I'll I, I I am as far from addicted, even though I smoke every day. But I, but I'm not addicted because yeah. I know what I can go. I can go two weeks, three weeks, and it's a non-issue. You want to hear something funny? This is true. When everyone had that bronch, I had a bronchial infection, a sinus infection from hell, and so I went two weeks. Uh, I went, we used to smoke pipes. It was very intermittent. It was maybe once every couple of weeks. And with cigars now, it's it's much more frequent because I just I enjoy them. And because of you, I've taken notes, and I'm going through a whole cigar book now. And my producer and I, we actually keep a book of the labels on there. Um, but uh, I went two weeks without smoking any cigars. Of course, I was sick. And then I just I was doing the nebulizer and steaming. And I said, to, to, to hell with this. I feel like crap. I'm going to try a cigar. And guess what? I coughed up what seemed to be a Ridley Scott film creature with a cigar. <laughs> And I got better. <laughs> it's like it clear. It's like it, it needed to dry sure. it out. That's not the best ad for smoking cigars. No, it's it's, it's <laughs> not exactly. That won't be in the next Arturo Fuente uh, magazine right, spread. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, th- th- it's interesting though. A lot of people don't realize that that Cuban. A lot of the seeds come from Cuba. The soil was great, and then there was no competition left in Cuba when it came to cigars. It's whatever Fidel wanted, Fidel got, and so a lot of the really great. Rollers left to uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, and Dominic- Dominican Republic. Right, correct. That's it. Yeah. So could you give us a like a couple? I know you you do this in your private email list. So I don't want to I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Could you give us a couple of your favorite cigars for people? Yeah, sure. Uh, but uh, understanding, I'm I, I my favorite thing is to try a new cigar. Whenever I go to a cigar lounge, I go show me something strong and good that I haven't smoked. <laughs> anyway, uh, I love all of the uh, the the. Things called my father. Have you seen those? I, I do. I like the the bijou is my pra- favorite from theirs. I think uh, John likes the judge the most. Yeah, the judges. They're both great. Uh, the, my father is very tasty. Again, it's on the strong side, but that's what I like. And of course, I love La Flor Dominicana Double Ligeros. 
because they're the super duper strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a double Lichero, not the one Lichero is not strong enough. Right. And <laughs> two Lijeros are winning nowadays. It's all about two Lijeros. Yeah. By the way, some yeah, some of the Padron Aniversarios are very yummy. Mm-hmm. Uh, S- S- Arturo Fuente is on a, you know, so, uh, is, is hit and miss. Yeah. Uh, it's got a very good reputation and it deserves it. Whenever I see Rush Limbaugh, he gives me an Arturo Fuente, which is very sweet of him. That is nice. Of him. And, um, you know, uh, off the top of my head, those are those are some of my uh, my favorite. Oliva makes a good cigar. Uh, I you know what I like box pressed. Have you had the the CAO flatheads at all? I probably did, but it, I don't have any recollection they, of whether I liked it or not. It's liter it's literally a, a cube, and uh, the label looks like an old muscle car. So this thing is six by sixty. They have in smaller Vitellos, but they also have a seven by seventy called the Big Block, which me and my when we do a writing binge and we write a bunch of sketches and commercials. We sit outside and we we have one of those. It's very it's very it's got a very uh, very strong um, sort of fig flavor. You know that, that some cigars have that like date fig raisin. Yeah, you know, it's great. The flavors are the best. It really is. Yep. And I, I tend to like the. This is just me speaking. You can correct. I, I I notice I tend to like the spicier cigars, the Habano wrappers, the uh, with with that kind of almost wasabi effect. That's kind of mm. what I call it. Mm. You know what I mean? Where it gives you that whoosh of spice and cedar. That's kind of been my profile. I've gravitated toward. I am not, believe it or not, I never quite resonate. They say chocolate or they say spice. Spice, yes, that's the one thing I can I can identify with. But otherwise, I either just like it or I don't. Right. I, I don't analyze why. I just, but uh, my wife loves coffee. I love cigars. It enhances her life. Um, this enhances mine. Uh, I, I I really am grateful to God for creating it. <laughs> and and what, am, what am I going to tell you? It's That's the way it is. Uh, well, we can't go much longer, so I will leave with a, One thing I do think that is important to note for people out there who don't know, like I said, you don't inhale. Cigarettes, for example, have over, I've read as high as 400-something active chemicals that can be added to it. There's yes, one ingredient there's no in comparison. Right. It's, it's, not, it's dishonest to love cigars and cigarettes. It's just dishonest. There's one ingredient in this, tobacco. And that's, uh, you can explain to the audience, three different, there's the, the filler, the binder, and the wrapper. And can you explain for audience right. who might not know what that, that means? Yeah, the filler is the thing you see the most of. What the ash, that's right. That's, but you really, uh, the binder is what keeps it together, and the, the, the wrapper is what you see on the outside. Right. The wrapper is the place of most taste. Right, most of the flavor. Now, not because of the smoke, but because it's in direct contact with your mouth, right? Right. Okay. So that's now final words for people who might be interested. I'm not do do not if you are not of age and if you do not if you have a pro- proclivity to an addictive personality, do not partake. Warning. Okay. There we go. Legally, I'm covered. What would you recommend for people out there who are looking to get started? My brother started a cigar club at his church. Star Lounge, tell them I'm a novice. I watched Crowder and Prager. They convinced me that this is one of the harmless joys of life for most people. <laughs> I'm good. And so, so much crap. Oh, I. I what would you give a beginner, sir, and show me how to light it and cut it? And uh, that would be a blast for, for somebody to try. It would. And you know what, my brother? How do you know when you're done? Because my I'm getting second-degree burns. On yeah, that's, well, that's a little cigarillo. Those burn very second hot. Second-degree burns on fingers is time to go. It's time to go. <laughs> um, yeah. My brother actually is in L.A. and started a cigar and pipe club at his church, and it's proven to be immensely popular. If ever you want to connect with them, uh, with some great company, great young conservative that's activists, right. uh, I'm sure they'd love to speak with you, but I know you're a busy man. Final question before I go. What is your philosophy? That the reason I picked this is because it's longer, and I thought I could maybe snip it and uh, salvage it later. Do you ever do that? Do you ever blow it out? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, and I, I don't understand why anybody would object. It's yummy later too. So what do I? What's the best way to do this? That's correct. You you first of all dump your ash completely. Okay. All right. All right, and then put this you know about a you know an eighth of an inch above the fire part. And by the way, for those who don't know, I take a cheap, I have a, a cheap cutter specifically for I this. Tell, I could tell here it's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. About about like that? Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to try to do this on camera here and make sure. Yeah, you gets hard to do it. Ah, damn it. Well. There you go. Sound You're in good shape. Clean this up. Yeah, it looks like it might unravel a little bit later, but you know what? And then uh, do, I, do you put this in a Ziploc bag or you just leave it out? That's right. Yes. 
Put it in a Ziploc bag. There we go. Look, look at all the stuff we learned with Dennis Prager and look at the good conversation, even, even without a cigar in his hand. But I do want to do the fireside. I know you invited me out when I'm in Los Angeles. I will definitely and, uh, do that. Come on, exactly. And just the, all you people know, I mean, we get a, uh, like a half a million viewers every week. And I, I just talk about life to the camera, take questions. And it's uh, at uh, Prager University, the fireside chat. They can Google it. And it makes a lot of sense for a, a thinking man, a brilliant man, a man who ponders, a man who gets into philosophy. So I highly recommend this book. We plug it so many times on this show. Thank but you. Exodus, the Rational Bible, I think people will really like and appreciate it out there. Atheists and believers alike. Thank Correct. you so much, Mr. Prager, for coming on. And I look forward to seeing you soon. See you in Bless you, my friend. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe or click the notification bell right next to the subscription button because subscribing doesn't mean anything anymore now according to the YouTube gods. And uh, if you like the late night show, you can watch it every single day, a full hour at loudwithcredit.com slash mug club. Subscribe there. That way we aren't beholden to the evil YouTube overlords and we don't have to start playing video games with mouth sound effects or children react. <laughs>